Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 12th and final round. Right hand, Golovkin steps in and down he goes again. Unbelievable. Mayweather makes a pay. What a rookie mistake. A sensational left hook by Delaware. It's facts. I'm the best. You know what I mean? I sometimes I don't want to believe in myself, but it's the truth. I'm the best. I'm going to show you how great I am. From Southern California, this is the Last Round Podcast. So here we go, another bonus show from Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio, California. This time we have two new guests, Cynthia Conte from The Ring and three-time world champion, Mikey Garcia. Hello, hello, thank you. Hey. So we just Exciting. had- It's our first time on it. Have you ever, you've never been on this, right? Never been on this, first time. He brought me donuts the last time. <laughs> it was very sweet, so I like them. They're a good podcast, All they right. feed me. <laughs> I don't want to feed you Mikey Donuts, you know, I, I don't know whether you're in camp or not, uh, but... Not yet. Um, I gotta start my diet soon, so. <laughs> Oh, is that a hint for something then? No, I'm just getting overweight. <laughs> I've, I've been out of the ring too long. Okay, that, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll dive into tonight's card. So, someone from your stable, Virgil Ortiz, came out really and just blew away. Brad Solomon, what did you think of that performance, Mikey? Look, it was, it was great. Uh, you know, even though Virgil has uh, less fights, you know, you know, he's shown the... Uh, the composure, you know, he, he came in here to do his job well, good game plan, working the body early on. We knew that his opponent had more experience and is the kind of guy who faints and boxes and, you know, a tricky guy. So Virgil worked on the body very well, and once once he saw an opening for, for the right hand, he landed a straight right hand to the chin, dropping his opponent, and then just continued to work the body. So that that's stuff that an experienced fighter does, you know. And, and he did it, so so we're very excited, very happy with his performance. Something I think that Virgil has, that a lot of people want to see, is he's not one of those that fighters that kind of goes out there, promotes himself. He's kind of a quiet guy. Yeah. He kind of lets the really his fighting do the talking for him. Do you know, being a, a more experienced fighter, do you kind of push him towards promotion, tell him to jump on things like podcasts, TV shows, do more? Because to me... He's got a lot more potential than someone like Ryan Garcia, but Ryan Garcia has a lot more promotion. Look, he, he's, he's a different personality, you know. Virgil is, is, is quiet. You know, he, his, his uh, character is just uh, quiet, you know, and, and uh, he's not flashy. He's not flamboyant. He's not going to be uh, opening his mouth, you know, and, and being loud. That's not who he is. But like you said, you know, I think I think he's very uh, very uh, loud when he's inside the ring by by his victories. The way he fights speaks a lot. The fans love it. He gets in there, gets a knockout, hurts his opponent. He's there to you know beat up his opponents, you know, on a mission. That speaks a lot. You know, he really does do his talking in the ring. You know, that's this, this is the best example of that phrase. You know, he does his talking in the ring. I do like that because Virgil did say he's very quiet. I mean, he doesn't do promotion. He doesn't care to. He lets his hands do the talking. He says, I make a lot of noise with my hands. That's all you have to see. And all I want to hear is you guys cheering when I knock them out. But he does, I mean, he's, you don't need to be quiet. I mean, me, you don't need to be loud to make noise. Uh, what he's doing is perfect. Exactly. And jumping on to tomorrow's top round card, we have... Uh, Terence Crawford going in there with Me Machine, his mandatory. I think a lot of people don't know too much about him, but just want to get that fight out of the way, then hopefully he can try and hopefully talk into some, some of those PBC fighters. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know I, I know Me Machine. I know I know he gets, you know, I worked with him, uh, and, uh, you know, he's strong. You know, he's got to let his hands go. You know, people don't know of him. They don't know of, of, of Me Machine, but this is a great opportunity. I mean, nobody knew Andy Ruiz either, you know, a few months back. This could be, you know, an opportunity for, for Me Machine to shock the world. You know, this is an opportunity that doesn't come by often, you know, and he is his number one contender. He does have, you know, boxing skills, great boxing skills. He's very strong. You know, he hits very hard. So lets his hands go, puts a lot of pressure, you know, don't show any respect. That's the kind of fight that I think uh, he needs to, to, to have against uh, Crawford. We all know Terrence is, is a terrific fighter, great skills. You know, one of the best in the world, uh, pound for pound. So, you know, obviously, you know, we feel that the the the, uh, the fight is 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 uh, for for Terence to just win this mandatory and move on to bigger fights, like you mentioned, other fights at welterweight. But you know, you can't count out uh, Mean Machine because you know he's also got got his 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 uh, goals and he's he, like I said, he hits very hard. So you can never count him out. 
It is a year of the upsets, 2019. It's not over yet. We've seen what's happened. Uh, it is a time for it's, it is a time for people like this to shine because we don't know. We don't know how um, he's going to come in. We don't know the game plan. He might have studied Terrence to the bone, to the T, and you never know. It could be an upset. And we're going to see what Terrence has to offer because he's pound for pound on so many people's list. Number one, but we haven't seen him fight in a while. In a while, so we're going to find out what he has to offer, and then hopefully. PBC can start crossing over or make some fights happen because the welterweights, you know, that's part of the glamorous division. Yeah, you, yeah. It, they have to fight. People have belts. They have to great fight. Matchups. They're great, great matchups. Yeah. But um, it's, a, it's just a good night of fights tomorrow night. Mike, you've been in a fight. Have you ever come across the... Because obviously Terence Crawford, everyone says, oh, he's on the wrong side of the street. He's a top-ranked fighter. Everyone in his division is on the PBC side. No, being a fight, have you come across that yourself? Well, you know, when, when uh, one promotional company doesn't work well with another promotional company, that is frustrating. I could see how, you know, that that might be, you know, some of the reasons why he's not able to get the fights, you know, particularly, you know, fights with PBC fighters. But, uh, you know, that's that's you know, also the reason why I've, I've always been, you know, a free agent. That's why I haven't attached myself to anybody. I've been working, you know, on fight-by-fight -fight agreements. And, um, you know, it, it gives me options. It leaves, you know, the door open for me to, you know, explore other options, other fights that might make more, more sense to me. So that's, that's the, the, the power that, that, that being a free agent gives me, and, and I love it. Um, it is unfortunate that sometimes, like I said, fights aren't made because companies aren't working together. But, you know, we hope we can see more crossing over uh, uh, between, between two promotional companies. Cause, you know, fans want to see some of the best fights, and, you know, they deserve it. I agree. I mean, I really, it's, it even goes along with the heavyweights also mm -hmm. because uh, you have PBC or, excuse me, uh, Wilder has a WBC yeah. belt and then all the other ones are with um, Joshua. So if Ty, let's just say Tyson Fury hypothetically wins, all the belts are in the UK. Like, we just want to see everyone fight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right, Mike. It's been in the UK. <laughs> yes. I forgot. I'm talking to the wrong person about that. <laughs> you can't hold the belt on. No, but I mean, these are the fights that the fans want. Uh, you can't, I, you know, you're a promoter. You want your fighters to fight. The fans deserve the fight. You're going to pay money. We're buying all these apps. You're buying pay-per-view $75, $100 for what? People that maybe we don't know. It's not fair. And it's time. It's time. Come on, promoters. I'm talking to you. <laughs> and then moving on to my personal fight of the weekend, Tiafimo Lopez against Richard Comey for the IBF title. And then next year should hopefully be fighting Lomachenko to be undisputed. Look, I, I like Tiafimo. He's a uh, great fighter you know I, I see the skills i see the talent and he's got the charisma he's got the attitude behind it that draws attention and draws people to to come watch him you know he's, he's got he's got it all going for him but this isn't a, an easy fight for him he's fighting for a world title against a very experienced fighter who's you know currently world champion and and he ain't gonna tr just let that belt go you know he ain't gonna just let someone pick it up so it's it's a tough fight you know Kome has has been uh you know fighting some very good fights been in some tough fights but he's been able to pull through and you know that's that's the fight that that's going to show everybody you know if Teofimo is the real deal against the top guys because up until now he's he's been the real deal uh, on, uh with all the guys that he's been matched but this is a real solid test against a real world champion you know not a former champion or a former title challenger but a current world champion so you know props to him you know because this is a, it's a good fight you know and I wanna, I wanna, I'm excited for that fight also. The, this fight, Theofimo, because we saw him coming up the ranks, and for this to be, this is a major step-up fight. And I don't know why people are really, they're writing off Komei on this one. I don't understand. He's a, he's a champion. Yep. He's a, I, I'm not going to say elite, but he's damn good. Mm -hmm. And for him, if he... If he, whoever wins this, is going to Lomachenko, I know you should. You, <laughs> you should be in the running for this. But it's um, we're going to see what Theofimo really has. Is he all hype? Um, is it? They're not just lucky shots that he's going to have. This guy's a skilled boxer. This uh, Kome is going to give him one hell of a fight. And if it's going to be for uh, for Lomachenko for belts, you sure know that they're both going to go to war tomorrow night. Do you think the personal problems and the family issues he had will? be on his mind he said you know everyone seems to say he's had a great camp but it's very rare you hear a fighter before a fight said yeah. you know what i had a terrible camp 
Yeah, look, fighters will never tell you they had a bad camp or that they're <laughs> sick or or that something didn't go well or that they're struggling to make weight because you don't want any of that, you know, to to influence or, or kind of uh, affect, you know, the the, the, the performance. But um, you know, things like things always happen. You, you're hardly ever a hundred percent. Like true hundred percent probably never happens. Um, but all of this is part of being a professional. You, you have to overcome stuff like this. You have to overcome problems, mental problems sometimes, you know, problems, you know, family problems or things outside of the ring, outside of the gym. You just have to overcome that and put that to the side and get in the ring and perform. You know, that's the best, you know, that, that you can do as a professional boxer. You have to learn to do that. So, I mean, will it affect? We'll find out. Does it, it, does it uh, affect uh, Tofimo and, and, and his performance? And that's the stuff that we, we're going to find out. And if he's able to overcome all this and put everything to the side and still perform great, that's going to show you that he's not just, you know, a great boxer, but he's professional enough to be able to do those adjustments and still keep moving forward and keep to the game plan and, and, and be determined to win this world title. What I like about this is that it, it's honest. He's honest about what he's going through. It's when people don't want to talk about, I'm struggling through yep. weight or um, in camp. But he's wearing his heart on his sleeve. He can't help it because his father is very vocal. <laughs> They're, yeah. I mean, it's real. It's a sad situation because it's it's your family and it's it's family, and um, it's very public. It's it's aired out, but. We're going to be able to see, can he be able to put his put his heart on his sleeve and be able to fight and keep all of that and really use, turn that, turn that energy into something else. That's, that's, it's going to be a true testament to see um, who Teofimo is going to be, how he's going to be able to adjust in the ring. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, the ad Adversity. This is a yep. big adversity for exactly. him. Exactly. This is true adversity. And now, re rewinding in a week, Mikey, uh, what was your opinion on Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua fight? Well, look, um, you know, he obviously wasn't uh, able to do anything. Andy, Andy wasn't able to do anything like he did in the first fight. I think, I think AJ fought a very smart fight. Um, he knew he had to box and he couldn't exchange because that gives Andy an opportunity to, to hurt him again. But um, so Andy also couldn't fight well because he was in the best shape he admitted himself you know he wasn't in the best shape he didn't take this fight as serious or he didn't you know prepare himself as well as he should have and you can see that you know you see the 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 outcome and andy also like i said fought a very well smart you know strategic fight um you know so i don't know if they're gonna have a third fight now i don't know but um do you think they will honestly I, not right now. Not immediate. Uh, no, mean, no, not not as an immediate. But knowing that um, how Andy Ruiz, if he came in in tip-top shape, sure, they know how dangerous Andy is when he's in shape. Yeah. Do you think it's a big money fight? It, it could be a lot of money, though. You know, so if if Andy does something and beats you know another another top you know heavyweight and and it creates enough buzz to get a third fight, you know, it could be huge money. And that could be one of the reasons why they'll take it. You know, when you're at that level, you're not just going to pick fights that you feel confident you're going to win. Yeah. Sometimes it's a tough fight. You're going to try to do everything you can to win. You're not going in there to lose. You go in there to win. But you know that it's going to be a tough fight. Mm -hmm. But the money is that great that you have to take it. It's, it's something that that's why you're fighting. You know, you're also fighting for, 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 for that prize. And it's it's too much money sometimes to, to say no, you know. Um, and he already beat him once, so he'll try to box again. You know, AJ will just keep boxing. Boxing circles, he'll just dance around him. I was disappointed I uh, when I when they made all the excuses because we all believed it. We mm -hmm. all believed that, okay, he ate 15 pounds in one day. But when we saw it, I just was disappointed because he lost, to me, I felt like he lost the belt the minute he didn't start training. Yep, yep. That's it's not about what's in the ring it's what you do outside of the ring it's it's your job uh but he learned a big lesson and i and i hope that he's taking it seriously and i for all the boxers who get to this level or even remotely to this level just always know that yeah you got to take this serious if not then don't be in, don't yep. be in the sport exactly people die in the ring for to, for those belts for yep. those wins we're now going to turn the attention on to you, Mikey. Yeah, I know. I always, I'm like, I'm always pitching Loma. So, <laughs> Manny. <laughs> we're, we're hearing rumors you may be fighting Jesse Vargas in the, the near future. 
look, um, they mentioned that as a possible name. You know, there's a lot of offers that come my way, and that was one of the names that they brought up. But uh, nothing has been finalized. Uh, nothing has been said. When all that news broke out, I was actually in vacation in Hawaii. So I'm like, I don't know where all that came from. I'm on, I'm on vacation. You know, they, they brought it up as a possible name, but they mentioned other names too. Those names didn't leak out any information, so that's why you only hear about Jesse. But there's a lot of names that I always bring. You know, they bring up names. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, I do want to be back, though. I do want to be back, you know, in the early part of 2020. And uh, I, I'm pushing to try to land a big fight with Manny. You know, people are excited for something like that. They keep talking about it. I think it will make great sense. So that, that's what I would really love. You know, I would love to land a fight with Manny. Potentially, you know, um, could be huge for me in my career and for everybody that wants to see that kind of fight. I think it's, it's an exciting matchup. You know, I, I, I'm doing everything I can to get to that. I really want this Manny fight. I mean, I have been pushing for so long. Um, it's either Manny or Loma, but, you know, I know that you have to stay busy, but I'm just always curious to see what you're going to fight at because I was I was quite shocked when uh, your brother told me 147 and then maybe a catch weight. But no, when he no, said no catch, catch weight, I'm like, it's no, not going to be Manny no. then because Manny doesn't do catch weights. I'm like, damn it. So yeah, yeah. I kind of figured it wasn't him. But um, no, but I also don't want catch weights. My brother wants, yeah. says, why not you do it like a catch weight, 42, 44? Like, nah. Don't they push you to go down to 140, though? Do, do stay you catch weight or... Or, you know, you don't do a catch weight, you either fight at 40 or 47. That's, that's the way I tell yeah. my brother. Nah, I ain't going to do a catch weights. Uh, <laughs> You're like, so I'm going to train. That. I ain't going to do no catch I'll fight at 40. You know, people I, will use it as an excuse. Oh, yeah. Mikey wanted 144, 150. Yeah. You know, 140, 147, fight for a title. You know, I, I've never been a big fan of catch weights. I understand why sometimes it's needed when big fight has to be made and different weight classes. So sometimes it's almost like you're obligated to fight at a catch weight. But if, if I'm confident that I can fight at a, at a weight class, then I better just fight at that weight class or move up or move down, whatever it is. Not a catch weight. What's your view on all these titles, like the franchise, the WBC franchise title? I think that's just a like, uh, commemorative title award that we, we gave them. I don't, there's no ranking for it, so I don't know why people make such a big deal about it. It's like when they give the... Uh, the other uh, we chose belts or the, the, the pearl belt, pearl, the diamond you know, title, the it's Mayan. Just it's just a yeah. commemorative belt. It's not a world title that you have a ranking for and people defend it. So I don't know why people get so offended for uh, mad. They just get mad because they don't know what it really is. They don't understand. They're not educated enough to understand what the title really is. It's not a world title they're gonna defend. All it is is a it's a it's a it's a title to present something in the ring as a commemorative belt. That's all it is. I, 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 I spoke with uh, Mauricio Suleiman about it, and I said, you know, people had this issue with the franchise, why um, Loma got it, and why did Canelo get it, and all these different belts, and I said, people don't realize, when they see a belt, they think it's a world title. Some, they have no yeah. idea. It's just a title, but some people are just... Mauricio called all of us uh, media lazy, because <laughs> we just read the headline, but you have to really read into it, but... Um, if it's deserved, it's deserved, and people just have to really read and understand what these titles are. They're not championship belts, guys, so relax. They're not world titles, so don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, Mikey, how close were you to ever fighting Lomachenko? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't had any of those conversations in a long time. Yeah, I mean... It never comes up in, like, a man, meeting when no, you guys are a promoter never. meeting. Like, Loma. Hasn't, hasn't, <laughs> hasn't come across. I mean... Look, it, it seems to me like Top Rank has a, a great agenda for Lomachenko, and they have a, 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 a route, a route, of, you know, that they're taking Loma by. You know, it's just strategically, you know, already in place, and they already got a lot of opponents, in, you know, ahead of him, prepared. So they ain't worried about fighting me. They never approached me, so he's never close then. Nah, nah. All right, Mikey, Cynthia, both of you, thank you for your time. If you want to promote your social media and your YouTube pages. You go for it. I know you got some products and services out there, I've seen. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Are you, you know, selling your uh, cars, too? <laughs> I got cars. I got, right now we're promoting a lot with my CBD mm -hmm. uh, line of products. Uh, it's my own, Pound for Pound is, is our brand, my own brand, Pound for Pound CBD. We have... Uh, we have a lot of products that are really, really helpful for a variety of, uh, of ailments, and 
I, I really support it. I back it up because I use the product and I see the benefits on myself. So that's why I'm able to speak about it. I actually use the product. I, I love it. And uh, I think a lot of people can benefit from it. We have a great testimonials. Um, you can go online. We have a, a sale right now. Go online on our, on our uh, P4P CBD website, P4PCBD.com. And uh, we have a sale for 30% discount right now. Um, give it a try because uh, anybody having any pain or sleeping problems or things like of that nature, this really helps. Is it VADA approved? I don't want you getting banned, Mikey. Listen, I've taken Vada, it. Vada. I, 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 I've, I've, been, I've been taking it, right? And when I was fighting uh, Easter and Spence, I gave samples and they approved it. Okay. There's no THC. There's no marijuana in my products. It's not even uh, extracted from marijuana. My products come 100% from hemp, which has 80% CBD. And then we extract the CBD. It's refined to contain nothing but CBD, no THC. That's why I'm able to use it, not test positive for anything. So I really, really, you know, back it up for those reasons. Do you have any samples with you? You know, I don't have any on me. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, get in touch with me and I'll send you some samples. Woo! And where can they find you on Instagram, Mikey? Oh, yeah. Uh, Instagram at Team Mikey Garcia. That's, that's my Instagram. Uh, Twitter at, at Mikey Garcia. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not as active probably as I should, but I do, I do get on, on the uh, Twitter once in a while and, and also on my Instagram. On Instagram, I'm a little more active on Instagram. But, uh, yeah, just uh, Team Mikey Garcia for the Instagram also a promoter too I'm promoting by the way it was I'm a, a great promoter. fight that Garcia you had promotions. the Adamas that was yeah he did good but we, 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 we didn't we didn't get the win but that's but it, boxing that was boxing it happens you know it's a damn um, good fight great fight so I mean we, we also promoting you know I got my cars business that we got cars? yeah I, see, got I follow some, him on Instagram I yeah. got some I got some fancy cars and <laughs> some exotic cars that we're, we're putting up I'm starting I have a dealership license that we're starting to now we're gonna, next year we'll have a dealership store and I mean I'm really expanding a lot of things I do I'm trying wow. to stay real busy so the time off right now that I've been off has allowed me to really focus and really push for all my other you know ventures and business aside yeah. We just learned something new about yeah. him. I know. We get discounts too. I'll Cars. give you a discount. I'll take. I'll take a lease. I'll, I'll help you get a car. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you can catch me. All my interviews for Ring Magazine, which is Ring Digital on YouTube. My Instagram is at the Real Fight Girl, and my own personal YouTube is the Real Fight with Cynthia Conte. And then you can tweet at me at Cynthia underscore Conte. Awesome. Right. Thank you, guys. And you can find us at The Last Round 12 on Instagram and Twitter. And we'll be back Monday with uh, episode 61. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for supporting and listening to the show. Follow us at The Last Round 12 on social media. Rate, review, and subscribe. This is The Last Round Podcast.